Hey everyone, it's Sarah and today I am back with a subscriber requested video. I have had a few of you ask me to do a review on some of the Armoth fragrances. So I had actually never heard of this house until you guys asked me to do some reviews on or to review some of their fragrances. Um, I do believe other fragrance reviewers here on YouTube have talked about some of these. I've kind of come across that in while I was re researching these and reading some of the comments on Fragrantica that there are some other fragrance YouTubers that have talked about uh, most, um, mostly the Club de Nui Intense for Women or for Women as well as the Italiano Donna, um, which I did not know I, I'm not sure which ones of these have been, or if any of them have been reviewed, um, so I hope that this isn't redundant, but these are fragrances that I literally picked out blind. I went through their kind of catalog of fragrances. I did research on each fragrance, and I looked at notes, and I did not know... Um, when I purchased these fragrances, I did not know that these were dupes for anything else. Um, I really just purchased these blind, not knowing a lot about the house, uh, the fragrances. I have not seen any other videos on any of these fragrances. Um, I will say that one of you asked me to compare the Signature True to Lancome La Nuit, which I was not able to get the Signature True. Um, I, I have found it, so I am going to order that one, and I will be doing a video uh, just on those two, just on the Signature True and the La Nuit. Um, but for now, these are one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six fragrances. Yes, I've got six different fragrances here that, like I say, I have not heard anybody talk about. I don't know anything about them except for my own experiences. Um, and I have since found out that apparently our moth is a Middle Eastern clone house, which, um, again, I did not know at the time. So I did find a website with a worksheet on it because then after I found out it was Clone House, I had to know what the ones that I purchased were a clone for. The only one that I knew was a dupe was the Club de Nuit Intense uh, Woman. I knew that that one was, was supposed to be a dupe for Tom Ford's Noir de Noir, um, but that's the only one that I knew anything about. So anyways, I'm sorry, I'm getting long-winded here. Um, I did find a worksheet on a website that had basically a uh, spreadsheet that had all of the Armoff fragrances and then next to it all of the fra all of the fragrances that the Armoff fragrances were dupes for. So I went through and I found out what all of the ones that I purchased are dupes for which I will let you know um, as we are going through each one. So let's just go ahead and jump into these six fragrances that I purchased. The first one I picked up from this was like the most popular one um, and the only one that I read comments f or not the only one there are two I believe that I have read comments about other fragrance reviewers having mentioned on their channel and this is the Club de Nuit Intense Woman. This is the fragrance that is supposed to be a dupe for the Tom Ford Noir de Noir. I will tell you I do have a little mini here of the Tom Ford Noir de Noir. So I have been able to wear them side by side and compare them. Uh, and yeah, I can definitely tell you that this is a very, very strong dupe for the Tom Ford fragrance. Um, this one actually lasts longer on me, which I can't believe I'm going to say. But even though Noir de Noir lasts really nicely on me as well, this is a Tom Ford fragrance that does last very well on my skin. So, um, but the Club de Nuit, Club de Nuit, sorry, does last a little bit longer. Um, I will tell you they are very, very similar and you cannot tell a difference between the two perfumes side by side except for in the deep, deep dry down. In the deep, deep dry down, the Noir de Noir is just a little bit more rounded, it's softer, it's just a little bit more refined than the Club de Nuit, but there's not a big enough difference that I would purchase the Noir de Noir over the Club de Nuit. Um, so let me unbox this and show you what this looks like. This bottle is like ridiculous. It's heavy. 
it's, I mean, this feels like a brick in my hand. Um, it's a little bit on the tacky side. It's got this weird kind of charm that's stuck to the front of the bottle. It's got rhinestones in the lid. I do like the black and gold. I think it's very pretty. Um, it, this isn't the worst bottle I've ever seen in my life. I definitely have worse in this in this little haul here, um, but it's, it's fine. Um, this is probably my favorite fragrance that I picked up. I can see why other reviewers um, rave about this one. This is a beautiful, heavy, incense-y rose scent. It's a little bit jammy. It's, it is just a heavy incense fragrance, like the Noir de Noir. So the notes on this one are, it's considered a Chypra floral. It has geranium, saffron, rose, caraway, nutmeg, violet, pepper, amber, oud, vanilla, and patchouli. Um, I don't smell oud in this. Uh, it's The oud in this is very, very uh, quiet. It's not a loud oud. It's not, I wouldn't consider this an oud fragrance. This is a very spicy, incense -y, heavy rose fragrance. This is perfect for this time of year. This is what I would consider a heavy winter fragrance. Um, just really, really beautiful. If you know you like Noir de Noir, I think you would really enjoy this fragrance. And this is a steal. I think I picked this up for $32 or $34. So and this is a huge bottle. This is, I believe, a 3.4 ounce bottle. Um, it does not... Well, it's in... It's, it was made in France as well. Um, there are different languages on here and it doesn't say in English what the ounces are. I, I think this is like a 3.4 ounce bottle though. It's huge for three or 30 in the $30 range. So that is the first one I picked up. The second one I picked up, uh, I really had never heard of this one. I didn't know anything about it. This is called Katerina Light Blue and they have this whole like Katerina line. I think there's Three, there are three different Katerina versions or fragrances. There's like a pink one and like a white one and then this light blue one. And this one is, um, this one is really nice. I, again, this was just a total blind buy based on the notes. Um, I will tell you I absolutely hate this bottle. <laughs> I think this bottle is so ugly. It's got this really tacky, like, plasticky bow on the front. Um, it's just very, very cheap looking. This lid is, it doesn't even fit very well. It's very plasticky and cheap. Um, but the fragrance inside is really nice. Um, this one, however, I would absolutely not recommend. This has very, very poor performance, very poor longevity. I sprayed myself a good eight to 10 times before I went to work. I sprayed it all over my hair, all over my clothes, all over my skin, everywhere, and I could not smell this fragrance an hour later after I sprayed it. So the performance on this is pretty abysmal, um, though it is a lovely, lovely fragrance. The notes on this one, this is considered a floral woody musk. The notes on this one are mandarin orange, bergamot, uh, orange, and I'm, gonna, I'm trying because people keep telling me I'm saying bergamot wrong, that it's bergamot. <laughs> which to me is just so counterintuitive. Um, when you see a T after an O, to me it's supposed to be silent, but um, I will try to correct that and start saying bergamot, but that's gonna take me time because I literally, in my almost 40 years of life, have never said bergamot. <laughs> okay, so, uh, sorry. Orange, heliotrope, tuberose, jasmine, vanilla, and cashmere. And this is supposed to be a dupe for YSL Manifesto L'Elixir. So I only have the original Manifesto, which is one of my top five favorite perfumes of life. Um, I had no idea that this was a dupe for a Manifest Manifesto Flanker, um, which I think is funny that I ended up just picking that blind. Um, I need to pick up the Manifesto L'Elixir now to be able to compare it. People in co the comments section on Fragrantica or the reviews have said that they actually prefer this to Lelixir, uh, but I, I don't know, I, I just, I don't have the YSL perfume to compare it to. 
the fragrance is beautiful, but I have a feeling that the YSL would far surpass the performance of this fragrance. This is just very, a very poor performer. And like I say, though the smell is really beautiful, it's, it's sweet, it's powdery, it's caramely. It's beautiful. I couldn't tell you though how it performs on the skin or what it or how it changes or um, you know I couldn't tell you what the fragrance journey of it is like on your skin or even on clothing because I couldn't tell you what it dries down to smell like or anything because it was gone before I could even before it even did anything. Um, but it is very caramely, powdery. You get the heliotrope in here. I don't get any tuberose, but it's just a really nice, sweet, warm, beautiful, caramely fragrance. Um, so yeah, there's that one. The next one that I picked up is called Italiano Donna. And this is funny because <laughs> as soon as I got this and I hadn't looked up, I hadn't found the worksheet yet that showed the dupes or what these were dupes for. As soon as I got this though and sprayed it on my skin, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so familiar. I swear I just bought a perfume that smells exactly like that. Well, my friends, this is a dupe for the Dolce & Gabbana Pour Femme Intense. And I don't have the intense version. I did just pick up the regular Pour Femme. Um, but this is, to me, just a stronger version of my Pour Femme. Again, the bottle, to me, is absolutely hideous. It is uh, like this faux leather, and it says... Um, Donna on the front and Italiano on the back. Mine came, oh, it also says like Armaf right here and mine came like with a peel, it was already peeling. Um, the lid, this part of the lid is, is like actually sticky to the touch. Though you can see, I've got my poor femme here. You can see they were definitely trying to go for the look of poor femme. Uh, the shape of the bottle, the lids, everything very similar. So um, this is, I would say, an absolute dupe for, uh, well, I mean, it smells very, very similar to Pour Femme. I don't have the intense, so I couldn't tell you actually if it's an absolute dupe for that. But on my skin, this smells like a very uh, amped up version of Pour Femme, just a stronger version of Pour Femme. So I do think that this would probably be a good dupe for it. Uh, the This is again described as a floral woody musk. This is mandarin orange, orange blossom, carnation, lily, jasmine, musk, tonka bean, vanilla, sandalwood, uh, sorry, and sandalwood. And again, this is a dupe for Dolce & Gabbana Pour Femme Intense. So um, this is probably my second favorite of the fragrances I picked up. This is one I'm definitely going to hang on to. Um, it's really, really nice. Uh, the performance on this one is okay. This, I would get, I get about six hours out of this um, before it dries down to kind of a skin scent and I would have to respray if I wanted it to be nice and strong again. Um, but this is a pretty good performer for the price and I think I picked this up for like in the $20 range. Uh, same with the Katarina. I think the Katarina was actually like $17, which it should be because it's not good. <laughs> I mean, it smells really good, but the performance is trash. So, um, but the performance on this one is pretty good. And for $20, I think it's probably a really good dupe for the, sorry, I've got a piece of fuzz stuck in my lip gloss. Um, probably a very good dupe for the Dolce & Gabbana Pour Femme Intense. So glad I picked that one up. Uh, the next one that I picked up is called let me find it here. It's right beside me. <laughs> it's called Eternia Woman. Etern Eternia. Yes, Eternia Woman. So this one, I love the box. It's really cool. It slides out of this like gold part. And then you've got your, um, you've got your white part. And we'll just unbox this one. This bottle, again, is hideous. It's really, really bad. Um, it's kind of got this like faux pebbled leather right here and then the other side is like just plastic it feels very very cheap um, the lid opens like this again very very cheap feeling just really hideous I do not like the bottle at all um, this is a really really nice fragrance though this is an oriental floral 
I will tell you this is supposed to be a dupe for Dior's Poison Girl and to my nose it is very similar. Um, I think that this one probably is a little bit better performer or is a little bit has a little bit better performance. I'm sorry, let me use my words here. <laughs> it, it has a little bit better performance than Poison Girl does. Poison Girl doesn't last on my skin for any time at all. I get a couple hours out of it before it is completely gone. Uh, this one I definitely get between four to six hours out of, so I think that this is a really good alternative to Poison Girl. It smells so, so similar to it. And like I say, it lasts longer. Um, this is beautiful. This is vanilla. It's like a fruity vanilla fragrance. Uh, this is considered an oriental floral. It's lemon, bitter orange, orange blossom, geranium, rose, almond, sandalwood, tonka bean, and vanilla. And you do. You really get the beautiful tonka bean and the vanilla. It's fruity. It's just, it's Poison Girl. It really is. It's Poison Girl. So I'm excited to have this one in my collection. Um, I think that this would be a good one to use. Like you could spray Poison Girl on and then, uh, there, sorry, there it is. And then if, if and when Poison Girl wears off you, you could refresh with this and it would just be a, you know, kind of a cheaper option. Or you could just buy this and um, you would have yourself a very beautiful Poison Girl dupe. So there's that one. Okay, the next one I picked up, um, I, I didn't know anything about any of these, but I really didn't know anything about this one. Uh, this is from their kind of niche line. That's what it's called. It's called our Moth Niche, and this is the Red Ruby one. Um, this one comes packaged a little bit nicer. It comes in this kind of uh, black round velvet box, and then you open it up, and there's your fragrance. Um, the bottles on these are still not the best in the world, but much better than the other bottles that I have. So this one, um, it's a nice kind of heavy glass bottle. It's just got uh, this round lid. It says Armoff on the top, and it's got this label on the front. So um, this one, oh my gosh, this is one of my favorites. Um, this smells very expensive. This smells, it's, I wouldn't go as far as to say it smells super niche. Um, it's definitely unique. It definitely doesn't smell like a typical designer fragrance. Um, it, it smells niche. I mean, it's, it's really, really nice. So this is a dupe for a fragrance that I know nothing about. Um, I believe it is an exclusive, it is a, Fragrance from Dolce & Gabbana's exclusive line, I believe. I, I'm not totally sure because I'm not familiar with it. But this is supposed to be a dupe for Dolce & Gabbana The One Collector. Um, I don't know if that's a different fragrance from Dolce & Gabbana The One, but it does say Collector, so I'm guessing it's, it's something different. Um, this is gorgeous, though. This dries down to the most beautiful, soft tea fragrance, like on my skin. It smells like tea. It's so, so classy and beautiful and expensive smelling. I love this. Okay, so and I would say this is, I shouldn't have said that any of the other ones were my favorite because this is actually my favorite of the six that I picked up. Uh, this is considered an oriental floral. This is Lily of the Valley, Mandarin Orange, Bergamot, Lychee, Tuberose, Musk, Vanilla, and Sandalwood and it's gorgeous. Um, it's just beautiful. Uh, the performance on this one is okay. I get between four to six hours out of it. Again, um, this is a softer type of fragrance to begin with, so it's not like a fragrance bomb. Um, you know, the projection isn't huge. You're not going to be smelled before you walk into the room. Um, it's not that type of fragrance. It's more of a classy, subdued, just soft, beautiful fragrance. I love this one. It's expensive smelling. It's really beautiful. So there's that one. And then the last one that I have to share with you is called Hunter for Women. Now, this is probably my least favorite one that I picked up, and which is why I saved it for last. Uh, the bottle on this one is extra, extra awful. It is, um, it's this. So I'm going to be removing this orange thing. It's got these like buckles in the back and it says Hunter across the front. And 
yeah. Um, I can remove this though. This lid is pretty interesting. It only goes on one way. So, uh, yeah. This is, it's not even a super heavy bottle for as like crazy as it looks. Um, yeah, it's just not my favorite. And it does say Hunter on the glass, so I can easily remove this crazy orange thing and I'll still know what perfume it is. Um, this one has very, very poor performance, very poor projectivity, very poor longevity. Um, yeah, this one is just not good. Uh, this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be a dupe or a clone of, um, I'm sorry, let me see, Bulgari Jasmine Noir Lessons. So again, another perfume I am not familiar with. I have not smelled that one before, um, but this this is just not good. This is supposed to be an oriental vanilla. Um, it's got jasmine, green almond, though, and I thought with the green almond and, uh, well, let me just finish the notes and you'll see why I thought this would be a good one. So jasmine, green almond, licorice, praline, gardenia, musk, patchouli, tonka bean, and sandalwood. So I thought for sure I would love this with the tonka bean and the sandalwood and the green almond and the licorice and the praline and the amber. I mean, it all just sounded like awesome notes that I would be totally into, but it's just not very good. Um, it's okay, like when you spray it on your skin, the scent is, it's not offensive in any way, it's not bad in any way, um, it's, it's not, there's nothing wrong with this fragrance. And I think that I would enjoy it more and I would probably wear it if it lasted on my skin at all, but it just doesn't, this is, it's just, it's just a very per poor performer, so. Um, yeah, I will probably be passing this along to somebody that is into kind of a darker jasmine type fragrance. Um, somebody that is, doesn't like, you know, really strong perfumes or doesn't care about projectivity or longevity or anything like that. So anyways, there's that one. Um, so yeah, guys, I hope if there are any more Armoff fragrances that you want to me to review besides uh, the Signature True, which like I say, I'm going to get my hands on that one soon and I will be doing a comparison for you uh, between that one and the Lancome La Nuit. Um, and, but other than that, if there are any other Armoff fragrances that you would like me to pick up and review for you, please let me know in the comments below. Um, I hope I picked ones that are of interest to you. I hope this video was helpful for you and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you in my next one. Bye!